Had I so interfered on behalf of the rich, the powerful, the intelligent, the so-called great, or on behalf of any of their friends, either father, mother, sister, wife, or children, or any of that class, and suffered and sacrificed what I have in this interference, it would have been all right. And every man in this court would have deemed it an act worthy of reward rather than punishment. John Brown The story of abolitionist John Brown is necessary to understand how the United States, the Union, fell apart. How minor issues of trust between North and South became major. John Brown was the son of an abolitionist. He hated slavery his entire life. And a rough life it was. Brown was married twice. His first wife died in childbirth. John Brown had a total of 20 children, nine of whom died before reaching adulthood. A rough life indeed. Every business venture John Brown attempted ended in failure. John Brown soon became a man with nothing to lose. After rescuing his sons in bleeding Kansas, John Brown turned his full attention to ending the crime of slavery in the United States. John Brown had a plan to do it. He took his plan to the famous abolitionist Frederick Douglass. His plan was to raid the federal arsenal in Harpers Ferry, Virginia. He would steal its 100,000 guns and hand them out to enslaved people on the surrounding Virginia plantations. Once armed, they would form an army of enslaved people poised to end their servitude, determined to end slavery. Upon hearing John Brown's plan, Frederick Douglass refused his offer to join, saying it sounded like a steel trap. Once in, he'd never be able to get out. John Brown was determined. He and about 18 volunteers rented a farmhouse near Harpers Ferry, Virginia. His group was made up of his sons, free and fugitive African Americans and fellow white abolitionists. One of John Brown's volunteer raiders was an African American man named Dangerfield Newby. Newby had joined Brown for personal reasons. He had recently got word that his wife and children who were enslaved on a nearby plantation were about to be sold to the Deep South's cotton plantations. Newby hoped joining Brown would allow him the opportunity to free his family from slavery. The farmhouse served as headquarters for three and a half months. For that time, John Brown and his fellow raiders planned and plotted their war against slavery. Then, on October 16, 1859, John Brown approached his men and said, Gentlemen, get on your arms. Grab your guns. It's right, time. Boys, look sharp. It's time to move. As John Brown and his men approached the town of Harper's Ferry, they came upon a railroad station. A baggage handler saw the men coming in the cool October night and ran to warn passengers of the approaching potential trouble. As he ran, John Brown's men shot and killed him. The first person to die in John Brown's war to free black people 
was a free black person. Carrying on with their mission of freedom, they easily made their way past the lone guard at the federal arsenal and secured the 100,000 rifles. But word had spread quickly, and by morning, townspeople began shooting down at Brown and his fellow raiders from the surrounding hills of Harper's Ferry. Brown took some hostages and took refuge in the protection of a brick fire engine house. Before long, they were surrounded by more than just townspeople. The U.S. Marines had arrived. They were under the command of Colonel Robert E. Lee. Inside of the engine house, several of John Brown's men were wounded, and his son lie dying on the floor. Come on out, nice and easy. After refusing Lee's commands to come out, the United States Marines stormed the engine house and arrested John Brown and what remained of his men. In all, 10 of John Brown's raiders died, including Dangerfield Newby, who was killed with a love letter from his wife, still tucked in his pocket. As John Brown awaited trial, news reporters swarmed his jail cell. He finally had an audience. John Brown could deliver his anti-slavery message to the entire nation. We find the defendant. He was found guilty of treason, murder, and attempting to start slave rebellion. He was sentenced to die by hanging. John Brown's actions divided the entire nation. He had become a hero to many in the North, a villain to many in the South. And when investigators found that several Northern abolitionists, known as the Secret Six, had helped Brown with his plan, many Southerners were now convinced that the North would stop at nothing to end slavery and kill the Southern way of life. John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry fractured the nation beyond repair. War was now inevitable. John Brown sat on his own coffin on his way to execution. Because Virginia authorities were so afraid that sympathetic Northerners would attempt a last minute rescue of John Brown, his hanging was closed to the public and protected by military. One man who loved slavery and therefore hated John Brown wanted so badly to attend his execution that he stole a military uniform and blended in with the other soldiers. That man's name? John Wilkes Booth. You may dispose of me very easily. I am nearly disposed of now. But this question is still to be settled, this Negro question. I mean, the end of that is not yet. John Brown.